Transgenderism uh, isn't a new issue. Um, issues like uh, transsexualism been around for decades and, and uh, transvestitism has been around for centuries. Um, but what is new, I think, is the, the force with which it is being thrust upon the public in general and on the church in particular, because there's a push to, to mainstream transgenderism and to normalize it and to require approval of it. And that, that really demands uh, a, a response from the church. We, we just can't ignore it. The first thing we need to see is that this hasn't come out of nowhere. Uh, this is the, really the latest phase in the sexual revolution. It has roots that go even deeper. Uh, this is, I think, the fruit of a secular humanist worldview that has been gradually supplanting uh, a Christian worldview and that, that idolizes uh, human pleasure and human autonomy, um, that, that we have the absolute right to define who we are. Secondly, I think we need to recognize that uh, we must avoid, as Christians, superficial responses. This isn't the sort of issue that we can just proof text a response to. It requires a deeper engagement that's coming from a holistic biblical worldview. We need to address this with a biblical worldview that has a, a, a well-established doctrine of creation, doctrine of fall, doctrine of mankind, a biblical anthropology. So we really need to bring all of these elements of a, of a biblical worldview to bear on it if we're going to give an adequate, um, sophisticated, well-informed response to it. The third observation I would make is that uh, there are different kinds of response to this. Uh, we might, for example, distinguish an apologetic response that, that's dealing with it as a public issue, um, uh, the need for the church to respond to certain forces that want to impose certain ideas, uh, infringe upon religious liberty and so forth. But there's also equally important a pastoral response. We need to recognize that there are, there are different people involved in this. There are some who are pushing an agenda very aggressively, but there are also people who are genuinely struggling with what's called gender dysphoria. Um, they need our compassion. They need our support. They need to know that the gospel really is relevant. All of us are broken in different ways. Uh, this is one kind of human brokenness, but all of us are broken. Fundamentally, our problem is that uh, we are sinners before a holy God. And until someone recognizes that their primary identity before God is as, as a creature uh, that is fallen and needs to be redeemed by Christ, unless they have that proper focus of what their place is in God's universe, they're not going to be able to put that particular aspect of brokenness in its proper perspective and then allow biblical truth to bring uh, about a, a healing process and a, an improvement of understanding the predicament that they are in.